student scholars in association with Goa Headmasters Association. Hello and welcome to my class. My name is teacher Sandra Dikunia and I am from Perpetual Sucker Convent High School, Navalny. Today my topic is the age of industrialization, chapter 2, class 10 from the history textbook. Now students, a little bit about the age of industrialization. At the beginning, I'm going to be explaining to you a little bit about this topic in brief. Now age of industrialization is about all the industries and about the new inventions that have taken place in the late 18th century. Because of the inventions and discoveries, there were so many technological advancements in the field of science. And these advancements have led to a great progress. Now, in this chapter, we will also see major factors of the Industrial Revolution, inventions of Industrial Revolution. We will also deal with the Agricultural Revolution, impact of industrialization on British India, and the effects of industrial revolution. Now students, all this will be dealt in this lesson. Kindly keep a note of all these sub points. Now in the introduction, when there were so many political revolutions taking place in England and the entire political scene was changing in Europe and America during the second half of the 18th century, there were a lot of economic transformations taking place in in England. Now it was a period when there were changes taking place in the field of manufacturing processes, agriculture, transportation, also in technology and all this had a very profound effect on the society. All right. So now what happened was this impact not only really affected Europe but it also affected North America, Western Europe, Japan and eventually it spread in other parts of the world. England was a very tough country as in it was able to fight successfully all its enemies without any problem, mainly due to the economic stability and the changes which it had introduced in uh, its industries, methods that they had used which in turn made their lives very comfortable. So you see children, England was a pioneer in this field and as a result of which uh, they did not have any problem, even the people living in the society now changed their way of living and their standard improved. The industrialization of Europe, like the French Revolution, left a permanent mark on the society. Life as it was described in the 18th century drastically changed. Classes shifted, wealth increased and nations began to assume their national identities. So you see, Industrial Revolution led to a lot of changes in the society. There were classes, for a capitalist classes emerged, there was the labor class, as well as wealth increase. So this brought about a lot of economic changes in the society. Now these economic transformations are very well termed, all right, by a very well-known British economic thinker, Arnold Toynbee. He has described England's economic development from 1750 to 1850. This was due to the inventions. So many inventions took place uh, during that time from 1750 to 1850 as a result of which there were a lot of changes in the society economically. Now, here we are going to be studying what is industrial revolution. Well, I'm sure many of you are uh, confused or rather some may even know the meaning of industrial revolution. The first thought that comes to your mind is growth of industries. All right, more inventions as a result of more changes in the society. Well, in short, industrial revolution was a fundamental change in the way goods were produced from human labor to machine. There was a drastic change Goods were produced on a very large scale, all right? You know, when there was a system where goods were produced at home by very uh, small time uh, 
laborers so what happened was now due to the industrial revolution there were goods which were produced on a large scale there were no longer human labor uh, used but instead there were machines from small machines we had even now progressed to big machines all right and these more efficient means of production and subsequent high levels of production triggered far reaching changes to ind industrialized society what does this mean there were so many changes that took place in the society goods were produced at a very high scale as a result of which they were uh, transported they were sold to other parts of the world and the production of goods increased all this triggered far reaching changes to the industrialized society now before the industrial revolution had taken place uh, there was a system which was called domestic system of production now what is the meaning of domestic system of production well it basically means where goods were produced at a very small scale with the help of the hand operated machines according to the needs of the people in the local market if you go to see now we cannot depend on small machines because the goods that are required in the market are on a very large scale so these uh, goods were produced on a large scale uh, depending on the needs of the markets the international market earlier it was for the local market but eventually it led to the goods that were produced for the international market in this system of production human labor was the most important component but the industrial revolution had completely changed this system as in it re replaced human energy by steam energy the industrial revolution was a transition to new manufacturing processes this transition included new chemical manufacturing and iron production processes improved efficiency of water power the increasing use of steam power and development of machine tools new tools were introduced new tools were made we no longer depended on the small equipments or tools that were used by small time laborers to produce their goods this in turn increased the efficiency of goods and which helped a better sale of goods in the market now the industrial revolution began in england for a variety of reasons england was the most favorable country in europe all right about 80% of the british people lived in rural areas well you can see this workers weaved textiles on hand looms in their homes so most of the workers spent time in their own homes weaving the textiles but when the machines were introduced they started doing the same work on the machines which doubled the uh, work and uh, the production was also big then coal was used to produce iron in small amounts the invention of coal was another great blessing to europe in 1750 most british goods were still made by hand a few years later most textiles were machine made in factories also students you need to keep in mind england was called the mother of industrial revolution now why was it called the mother of industrial revolution since it began in england and in certain way favorable conditions uh, had given england edge over the other countries now let us see the major factors of the industrial revolution now the first factor that we are going to be dealing is a geographical location now geographical location of england greatly helped the industrial revolution now you will be wondering in what way being separated from the mainland of europe england remained immune from wars that is they were used to all the wars that were taking place in europe and political upheavals of napoleonic conflicts and the conditions in england remained quite stable those stable conditions enabled england to develop their industrial capacity without fear of battle damage to loss of life so all these conditions were favorable as a result of which industrial revolution started first in england now let us see the second point availability of capital now the vast amount of capital had accumulated out of the profits all those uh, traders had accumulated in england over the growing trade in america and in 
uh, India. And this profits which they had accumulated helped them in buying new machinery, new tools. All right. This new machinery and tools were then used by the traders to uh, improve their goods, to increase their goods as well and improve the efficiency of goods. In addition, English investors also obtained a lot of capital. Now, where did they get the capital from? Well, all the money came from the Bank of England. And this money that they uh, uh, got was utilized for purchasing the uh, tools, all right, and for purchasing the raw materials. Uh, money was also available with the rich people. And this money, which was uh, uh, there with them, they utilized in setting up new industries. These people were even ready to take risks. They were willing to invest a lot of money, but their main intention was to increase their profits. They wanted to make sure that the uh, profits are doubled so that they can invest more and more in new industries and England would become one of the leading uh, countries in Europe. We we'll go to the next point, availability of natural resources. Now England was also blessed with a lot of natural resources. They had natural resources deposits like coal, iron and mineral fuels. The location of coal and iron uh, mines also encouraged, encouraged English to evolve new uh, techniques okay, for the manufacture of iron and the utilization of coal. We go on to the next uh, point, availability of labor. Now what happened? A lot of people had immigrated to England. What was the reason? The first point was because of uh, many of them were persecuted because of religion. So religious persecution was one point. And the second one was because they wanted to find employment. Many of them had no jobs. You know, it was a period where people uh, lost their jobs in the villages, in the towns. And so now they wanted to come to the cities in search of jobs. So England was the right place since there were industries which were coming up. It was becoming an industrial area. So most of the people from the villages, they shifted to the nearby cities and town. So labor was available in abundance. Another point that you need to keep in mind here is the enclosure movement, which actually convinced the people from the nearby towns and villages to come and settle down in the cities. Now, what is the enclosure movement? Enclosure movement basically means that the small farms of the laborers were taken away by the farmers, that is the big time traders. They took their small farms and attached them to the large farms and later on used modern techniques of farming to increase their goods and efficiency. So students, I suppose you have understood this point. Let us go on to the last point, scientific and technological knowledge. Now England was blessed with people who had a lot of scientific and technological knowledge and uh, they were also ready to experiment all right, on the different inventions with the different machines which in turn helped them a big deal. These scientists also received support from the rulers. So the rulers helped them in various ways and once these rulers gave the necessary help, it reduced the scientists and the discoveries in England gave preference to discover those machines which would now be made all right, to reduce the work of the laborers. Initially, the laborers would take some time, 8 hours, 10 hours, 12 hours, or even more than that, they would spend so much of time with the machine. But now with new machines that were introduced, you see that there was less time taken by the workers. And the machines, of course, were very good quality and they were cost effective. This led to the invention of number of machines in England, which eventually led to the factory system. So students, I suppose all of you have also understood the major factors of the Industrial Revolution. Now, we go on to the next topic, inventions of the Industrial Revolution. The factory system had developed due to the discovery of the new source of energy which would easily operate the machines. Now these machines were operated by the laborers. Heavy machines were of no use if there were no effective power to operate it. 
मैन पावर वॉज इनफिशियंट एंड वॉटर पावर वॉज नॉट अवेलेबल एवरी वे दस इट वॉज द नीड ऑफ द आर टू इन्वेंट सच अ सोर्स ऑफ एनर्जी विच वुड ओवरकम ऑल दीज डिफेक्ट्स दैट इज देर वॉज नो मच मैन पावर देर वॉज नो वॉटर पावर अवेलेबल सो हाउ वुड दिस बी ओवरकम सो वॉट हैपन वॉज थॉमस न्यू कॉमन हु हैड ऑलरेडी डिस्कवर्ड द स्टीम इंजीन but somehow it could not be put to use because it had some defect some limitation so this was later on modified by um james watt he improvised improvised this in a way that it could be easily put into operation this steam engine was so smooth to operate and more powerful the steam power had surpassed all other sources of power and now it was used in the textile industry so students now you can see the different uh, inventions which i am going to be doing in brief because not all uh, are uh, shown over here the first one you can see is a water frame it was invented by richard arkwright and he was the one who actually invented the water frame what was the use of this it lowered the cost and it increased production then we have the next one the flying shuttle Now, who invented this was a very famous inventor, John Kay, in the year 1733 A.D. What was the use of the flying shuttle? It allowed thread to be woven into cloth faster. So it was done at a much faster pace. It doubled the amount of cloth output per worker and per day. Then we have the spinning jenny. The spinning jenny was also invented by James Hargreaves in 1769 A.D. And what was the use of the spinning jenny? It was a wheel that worked that worked eight threads at a time. It spun cotton into thread. Well, that was the use of the spinning jenny. There was a shortage of thread before the spinning jenny, but the spinning jenny made a way to produce threads. The power loom was also invented by Edmund Cartwright in the year 1784. He addressed the problem of mechanical weaving. Then we have many more inventions that way. Then we have the invention of the seed drill in the year 1674. Jethro Tull was the maker of the seed drill. It could plant wheat and turnip seed in three rows at a time. So please make note of this. it could plant wheat and turnip seed in three rows at a time now we come to the next most important invention the safety lamp and this was invented by a very famous inventor sir humphry davy now the use of the safety lamp was put together or rather it was used by the miners all right now what was the use of this it was used to ensure the safety of the miners who were working in the coal mines their lives are very dangerous they had to go deep mine so the safety lamp helped the miners it issued a warning to the miners now what warning was issued to them when the level of carbon dioxide rose in the mines or other when it increased and when there was a danger to their lives it gave them an alarm so the safety lamp was a blessing that came to the miners Now students let us go on to the next point transportation industry well the development in the means of transport was again a great blessing to europe and to other parts of the world in what way did transport help as you all know goods were produced on a large scale now there were better machines there were big machine small machines were replaced by big machines and these machines now produce goods at a larger scale now to transport these goods all right we required vehicles initially there were no vehicles they were uh, transported or sent from one place to another on small uh, vehicles all right but now with the development of transportation goods were now produced on a large scale and they were transported from one area to the other even remote areas were touched for that matter all right the traders made sure that the goods reached all around the globe all around the world especially later of course first it started in europe and then it traveled to the other parts of the world so uh, what were the different uh, developments in transportation 
well roadways waterways and railways were developed the roadways waterways and railways were developed in england during the 18th century and all this helped england in order to develop uh, and bring about a more better change in this field roadways were developed in england during the last half of the 18th century by john mac adam he discovered a new process of road building he gave the word as mac adamized roads he used a mud binder between the two layer of stones to hold them together mud was later on replaced with tar these hard surface roads could tolerate the burden of large scale transportation so even heavy trucks heavy vehicles could now travel on those uh, strong roads then we come to waterways the building of canals and the use of steam power to operate the locomotives had revolutionized the use of waterways as a means of transport then we come to the next one that is the last one in transportation industry that is the railways now railways again till today we see people traveling in india from one state to the other it helps us a big deal and they are more economical and cheaper unlike the other means of transport like if you uh, take into consideration airways it is very expensive especially everybody cannot afford it right but the with the development of the railways it came again as a blessing to all the people and you see the goods were now transported by the trains or all those other different modes of transportation at a much faster pace even in india there was a railway line laid down by lord dalhousie and it was uh, laid in the year 1853 after transportation you know we go on to the next point which is communication what is communication i'm sure students all of you will say communication means to communicate with each other you're right communication today is also very important imagine our lives if we didn't have a mobile we would not be able to communicate with our families with our friends but because of this uh, improvement in the means of communication with the new inventions all right it helped us and made our lives much comfortable much more easier long distance communication was now possible with the invention of the telephone who invented the telephone well it was invented by alexander graham bell and then later on it follows uh, followed by a wireless uh, telegraphy which was also invented by marconi and the idea of the penny post was put into practice by roland hills so students you have seen how transport and communication eventually developed and helped the world to come closer and to connect with each other in a much better way now we move on to the next topic agricultural revolution well this is one of the most important topic i believe as well now why agricultural industrialization means the changes in the cultivation of land which is termed as agricultural revolution let me say it again agricultural revolution means the changes which took place in the cultivation of land now you see the farmers during those times that is much before the inventions and the new techniques were introduced did not you know grow the crops in the same way the crops are grown today they used maybe small tools they used very small machines which did not help them to give a better yield or a big scale production of goods but today all right with the introduction of new seeds new fertilizers new chemicals better tools the efficiency of goods have increased and these goods also have been produced at a very large scale so this is what we are talking about it was a agricultural revolution what was done earlier by the small time farmers had now drastically changed and taken a new course all right the new uh, the use of uh, the new techniques in agriculture increased the quality and quantity of goods all right and the food grains the use of new crops new techniques new fertilizers the system of drainage waste lands benefited the farmers 
So you see, all this came as a blessing and the lives of the farmers changed. It in turn uh, brought about a new life to the farmers. Now let's come to the next topic, the impact of industrialization on British India. This is again a very important topic. The colonial rule had adversely affected the Indian economy. It transformed traditionally rich economy into an economy which served the selfish interest of the Britishers. The British supremacy used all the raw resources of India. They exploited India in such a way that they took all the profits for themselves, right? And like the other colonies, India now became a place the British used their political supremacy to exploit the raw resources of India. Like the other colonies, India now became a place where the British producers could purchase the raw materials at low prices and sell them in their country at a very high price. So all the goods were bought in India from our local uh, farmers. They bought them for a very low price. But when they returned to their country, they sold these goods for a very high price. So India could not benefit. The farmers could not benefit in any way. Most of the profits were taken. You can say the large profits were taken by the British. Thus India now became an exporter of raw material instead an exporter of finished goods. They did not become an exporter of finished goods. They only became an exporter of raw material. That is the British bought the raw materials from them and uh, they bought them at a very cheap price and they sold them at a very high price. It is said that the British industries were fed with all the raw materials from India. The introduction of railways in India again was another big death blow to the Indian economy. Now it was possible to buy the raw materials okay from the remote areas of, of the country besides this it became very expensive to transport the indian goods through the railways because they had to pay a high charge for it so the farmers could not able uh, they uh, were not able to afford this high charges thus it increased the prices of the indian goods which in turn decreased the demand for them so obviously when the prices for the goods are high, people wouldn't want to buy them. So the demand for those goods increased and all these losses had to be faced by the Indian farmers. As a result of all these British policies which were good, all right, benefiting them, the Indian farmers faced a lot of problems. Now what happens next? Even the handicraft industries had to be closed down, the small scale handicraft industries. They could not get any profits because the British were taking the major profits. All their industries were closed down and uh, a number of prosperous cities such as Dhaka, Murshidabad and Surat even lost their ancient glory. These cities were well known for trade but no longer they were known for their trading activities because British had taken over the market. The industrialization led to large-scale poverty among the Indians. Many of them led a very poor and miserable life. They could not afford even a basic leaving. And all this was because of the British. The British overtook the uh, industries in India and the farmers took a back seat. Thus it is rightly said that the British industrialization was brought about at the cost of the Indians. Let us take the next topic, effects of the Industrial Revolution. The Industrial Revolution was another of those extraordinary jumps forward in the story of civilization. Beautiful quote. Now, the Industrial Revolution was also called the Noisy Revolution because there were so many changes that took place in the political, social and cultural um, fields. It changed the entire life of the people and transformed the entire society. It was a transformation which had never taken place before. So to the people, it was a big change. It was a big change, a massive change that had taken place. More industries, more factories, all right, changes that took place in social, cultural, 
in every possible field which in turn brought about also a change in the society and in the lives of the people no doubt this was a good change it was much required for the people if you see the uh, growth the development that took place in the 18th century from then on if you analyze it till date there is a huge development all right and all this we owe to the inventors who gave us the different machines and helped us with the inventions if not for those of course those machines now are modified we are not using the same old machine we are using new machine day by day technology is advancing as a result of which lives of people are becoming much more better they are becoming more comfortable today at the comfort of our own homes we can have all the gadgets and this in turn has made our lives very easy all right now all this also had a negative an adverse effect brought about a lot of evil practices in the society the lives of the people changed the more sophisticated we are you know we get more spoiled so that is exactly what happened the lives of the people changed at the same time you see this evil practices uh, changed the entire human society now let us see the impact on england in what way industrial revolution brought about an impact on england what's the meaning of impact a change all right now england was now converted from a agricultural country into an industrialized country as you all know most of the farmers in england uh, they grew their farms within their own areas the small farms that they had attached to their homes all right this uh, production was at a much smaller scale but once the machines were introduced new machines were invented the lives of the farmers changed all right from a small scale production it was a large scale production of goods which in turn uh, increased the efficiency of goods now england had a great impact her exports increased to a very big extent everything started in england more because of the factors that were favorable all right for the growth of industries and factories the workshop it was called england was rightly called the workshop of the world her colonial empire in asia and africa helped her to secure raw materials you know that england had colonies in asia and africa so what england did was it tried to procure raw material from asia and africa that is even from india i have already told you they bought a lot of raw materials from our farmers and these raw materials that they purchased were bought at a very very uh, low price so who benefited over here not the indians the major chunk of the profits were taken over by the british so you see there was a great great impact on the uh, economy of england thus the british manufacturers they earned huge profits and they invested the profits in setting up new factories new industries which in turn increased their profits so england used all their profits whatever money they received all right from the industries all that money was utilized in setting up new industries and factory so england became the workshop of the world let us take the positive effects of the industrial revolution the invention of the railways and the waterways increased the mobility of the people goods could be now transported from one state to the other from one area to the other even from a country they could be taken to the remotest area of the country the production of goods with the help of the machines also led to large scale production of goods we have already uh, Uh, discuss this point before so the production of goods was done at a very large scale due to the uh, new machines that were introduced it increased the living standard of the people so no doubt there were people who faced a lot of problems initially but with the invention of new machines with the growth of industries and factories the lives of the people changed their lives became their lives became much more comfortable the expansion of the banking and credit facilities also increased the circulation of money so you see now banks gave loans to people whoever wanted to start new factories whoever start wanted to start new business this in turn helped them to grow all right 
and the use of different sources of energy reduce the burden of work energy uh, the earlier people worked on smaller machines all right or rather they worked with their hands but now with the new machines the number of work hours that they put in even to work on a particular product was comparatively very low and of course the productivity was much higher okay the scientific cultivation increased the quality and quantity of goods and of course the lives of the farmers became much more better the standard of the people became more comfortable as compared to the earlier times the expansion of the banking and credit facilities helped the circulation of money so people who wanted to take loans from the banks now got the loans to start new business as a result of which their lives and everything changed the use of different sources of energy reduced the burden of manual work most of the people earlier worked with their hands and this in turn made them put in more amount of hours of work but once the machines were introduced less number of hours were put in to produce a particular good industrialization brought the nations closer it helped the nations to connect with each other all right it brought them closer they could now trade uh, from one country they could trade with another country and through trade it helped them to decrease the isolation today you see even we can travel from india you can go to america from america you can go to uh, england or to any other part of the world and all this is possible because of course of transport we can also communicate to people from one country to another within no time than a fraction of a few second maybe you can put a call all right life has become so much easier now all this credit goes to industrialization that is the improvement in the means of transport communication and the growth of more industries and factories industrialization also helped the nations in international politics what does this mean it brought the nations of the world closer to each other and they could now connect with each other in a much better way so the relations between the different nations of the world strengthened 